Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's talk about the comets in our solar system. Comets are mostly made out of ice and dirt and rock, uh, predominantly ice. And so when they come streaking in from the outer regions of the solar system, and they tend to have very elliptical orbits, they come in and they revolve around the sun and they go right back out where they came from. Sometimes comets come from so far away that it takes them thousands of years to make one trip around the sun. And again, when they make a trip around the sun, they basically just graze the sun on one side and just, they go way back out in the far reaches of the solar system into the copper belt and sometimes all the way out to the Oort cloud. Comets are usually anywhere from about a mile to maybe 10 kilometers across, so that's called the nucleus right there. And as the nucleus gets close to the sun, the evaporate, the heat of the sun begins to evaporate or sublimate the ice on the surface of the comet and you start seeing an ion tail coming out the, the, the side. The ion tail always is positioned directly away from the sun because it's the radiation and the solar wind that causes the ions to streak away from the comet. And then of course the comet has a lot of uh, material in it besides ice like dust material and and kind of like a uh, I would say silicate material that kind of thing that then comes streaking off the comet as well and because there is a slowing down property of this in other words the the dust particles that come off tend to slow down as they go farther away because they, they start from, uh, colliding with other particles and other atoms and and the solar particles uh, from the sun in the region around the sun. So they start slowing down towards the end and so they, the dust tail tends to curve off somewhat and you can then usually see two distinct tails, one that has kind of a bluish tint to it, this is called the ion tail, and one that has kind of a silverish, brownish tail to it, which is the dust tail coming off the, the comet. Under all circumstances, the, when they initially then when the dirt and the dust and ions are removed from the comet, they streak away from the sun because it's basically the radiation and the solar wind that pushes that off the comet. Notice if the nucleus, let's say, is about 10 kilometers across, sometimes they're a little bit smaller, sometimes a little bit bigger. Around the nucleus, we have what we call a coma. This is a region as the comet gets close to the sun from the, the heat from the sun, particles become uh, not airborne, so to speak, because there's no air around the comet, but they get, they get dislodged and they form a big spherical region around the nucleus. Now, if the nucleus is only about 10 kilometers across or so, the coma can be as much as a million kilometers across, so one million kilometers. And typically, that is what we get to see. When we look at a comet, we don't see the nucleus per se because it's so small from any distance, it's just not visible. But the coma becomes a very large spherical object, like a million miles across or a million kilometers across, much, much bigger than the Earth. Sometimes the size of, let's say, Jupiter would be uh, close to not quite a million kilometers, but it would be an object about the size of Jupiter as a comparison. And so you can see that from quite a distance. Quite often, comets can be see, seen with the naked eye if they get close enough to the Earth. Around the coma, there's even a larger envelope around the, the uh, comet that's called a hydrogen envelope. Now, that's typically not visible to the naked eye, but in the ultraviolet radiation, because of the ionization of the electrons and the electrons dropping up and down from the first level around the, around the uh, nucleus of the hydrogen atom, the, the uh, radiation then emitted as it falls back down to the inner level at that, at that uh, point, that then emits ultraviolet radiation. So with ultraviolet um, telescopes, we can actually see that enormous envelope around the, uh, the comet. And that envelope tends to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about 10 million kilometers across, absolutely huge. And then, of course, that takes then a ride along with the comet as it goes around the sun. So this is something that we can only see in the ultraviolet radiation. So comets are interesting. They, there's probably billions of these things out there and every once in a while one of them will come down and visit us from nearby. Sometimes we've seen them before like Halley's Comet which come back every 76 years which means Halley which has a, um, an, uh, an orbit kind of like this at the far reaches. The orbit goes out about to the distance where Pluto is and it comes all the way back in and it takes a trip around the sun about every 76 years. So the last time it was here I believe was in 1986. So add 76 years to that, that will be the time that we have another chance to see Halley. In other instances, comets have been on its path for thousands of years. They come by and then we probably will not see them again, of course, for many thousands of years again. 
and we will no longer be here when that, those comets come back, obviously. So that gives you kind of a feel for the comets in our solar system. In the next video, we're going to take a close look and see what else those comets tell us about the solar system. Again, those are probably left over from the very beginning of the formation of the solar system, when the ices were driven way out to the outer reaches of the solar system, and then because of the gravitational uh, interaction between them, and perhaps sometimes a star coming close by will knock those out of orbit, and they then come screaming into the in inner regions of the solar system. But way out there, there's probably billions of these things, and they're just waiting there for an opportunity to come and visit us. So, on the next video, we'll learn a little bit more about our solar system based upon what we know about these comets.